Hey guys, it's Levi here from Levi's Shoe Shine. Uh, super excited to be able to do this video today. This will be my first collaboration with a brand. This is a custom pair that was just made up uh, by Crew Nonpareil out of Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, the owner of the brand is Kenwin Small. Uh, he's become a friend of mine over the past few months and uh, we got to talking and this is a, a, a pretty cool pair that's done in one of their new patinas that they offer, their fire patina. Uh, this pair um, is a custom makeup, as I had referenced, and uh, we're excited to be able to do that. So we're gonna do a quick unboxing, uh, just a quick review of the shoe, and then hopefully be able to get into uh, a nice detailed shoe shine for you. And uh, let's, let's get to it. Uh, these shoes, uh, Kenwin, it does live in Trinidad, but uh, these shoes come, his maker is in Spain. Uh, I gotta say, Kenwin's really great to work with. Uh, like I said, we have become friends over the last couple of months, but uh, he he really handles the, the custom side of things all very well. Um, you know, you get to select, select your last, you get to select the style of the shoe, you get to select the sole. Uh, the liner, any, oh, pretty much everything that you could want to do. Uh, he uses an app for the sizing of the shoe to make sure that it is as close as possible to being a custom fit. So this pair uh, being my first collaboration, my uh, these are actually going to be a gift for my dad, and uh, he's been wanting a pair of shoes that uh, has got you know a cool patina to it and so working with Ken we kind of came up with this pair that I'm really excited to see and to show you. So uh, like I said the brand is uh, Crew Nonpareil and uh, Ken really prides himself on being able to overcome the frustration that so many men have with finding the right size in their shoe um, and overcoming that like he does uh, hopefully for my dad. My dad has uh, large feet uh, long and wide, so it's tough to find the shoes that fit him properly. So that's our hope and goal with this pair. Uh, you'll notice that the box, um, it was not damaged in shipping, so it's very nice. Uh, these will look, look very nice for that gift for my dad later. Uh, shoes come in these nice uh, dust covers here. They say uh, in crew on Pharrell, the brand name. See, we'll take that off. Look at that shoe. That is that I, the camera? I'm sure doesn't do this shoe justice. But this is truly, uh, truly a beautiful pair of shoes. Let's get the second one out here. Nice packaging. So my dad has always been a fan of the double monk style. Uh, so that's what we've come up with here. Um, it is a uh, double monk, which is a little bit more of a modern take on the shoe. You can see um, the backward sweeping of the second buckle here. Um, but uh, so dad always has liked these, uh, the double monk style and he's always liked more of a chiseled laugh, so that's what we went with here. Um, upon speaking with Ken, is we went with the double monk with the chiseled last, and then, um, of course, with the really unique fire patina. Um, I gotta say, that is a, it's very well balanced between the two shoes. Um, it, it, it really is impressive, and they come with a pretty, pretty decent shine right out of the box. Uh, we're gonna, probably take that another step further here just a minute but let's see finish taking these out so uh, the the buckles are pretty pretty nice quality here um, take one out and let you see how that looks here
So, uh, of course, mounted on elastic there, and um, they really are pretty easy to use compared to some of the different double and single monks that I've dealt with in the past. Leather is pretty soft for being fresh out of the box. So, uh, these are pretty sharp pair of shoes. We went with the, the day-night sole, uh, just to give him a little bit more, uh, my dad is not a fan of the leather soles, so a little more traction, a little more wear, um, a little more comfort for him. Um, these are an 11 and a half triple E shoe, so it's a pretty, pretty hefty shoe compared to my uh, size 9D width shoe that I'm accustomed to. Um, I am noticing though on the soles, uh, the, the day night wasn't all the way properly centered when it was sewn. Uh, looks like it went a little bit into uh, into the sole a little bit. Not a not a huge deal, but uh, not not desirable, I guess. Uh, other than that, I'm not I'm not really seeing any other flaws with the shoe. Uh, it's a 270 degree welt. The heels cut pretty pretty close there to the heel cup. Uh, it's uh, overall, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty impressed with the shoes. Uh, probably tell Ken I have to get myself a pair here in the next, next little bit, but we're going to go ahead and move right into the shine. Um, I think that's what Ken is more excited about. I know it is for me. I, uh, I've always been a fan of his designs and some of the lasts that he uses and uh, just really excited to be able to get to shine a pair of his shoes today. All right, so uh, my first step, it's gonna be a little different. This is, of course, a brand new out of the box pair of shoes. So my, my normal steps of, you know, cleaning and all of that will be uh, passed, passed on. We will go ahead and we'll brush and do a quick round of conditioner, just to make sure that the leather is uh, soft and pliable and ready for uh, wear. So that's what we're gonna do now. Of course, everything I use is from Saphir. Uh, so this is the Saphir Renovator, and we're gonna use that. We're gonna do just a nice light layer across the entire shoe. Now, I will say, um, Saphir Renovator does have a tendency sometimes to pull uh, patina off of a pair of shoes. So I always, uh, especially when working on patina shoes, I'm always careful to apply it to a less noticeable location before applying it, say like on the vamp or on the toe of the shoe. But uh, not noticing any issues here, looking like uh, we're, that's a very well set patina. It's very fastly dried, so that is good. So I'm gonna do a quick light layer, you can see I'm using just a very little amount across the shoe, but this is something that uh, I've done now for quite a while. Anytime I get a new pair, I'm always sure to condition them before I wear them. You know, I know this pair of shoes hasn't been sitting around long. I've been, Ken has been keeping me updated really, really well uh, through every step of the process, through the design and through um, each step of the shoe being made. So I know that this shoe hasn't been sitting on an empty shelf and just collecting dust and drying out, so I'm not as worried about this pair, but when you're dealing with um, shoes that are more ready to wear and they've just been sitting waiting for someone to purchase them, you can run into uh, dryness and cracking. So you always wanna make sure you get a nice layer of conditioner to let the shoes really just soak that up. Not too much. Always say if your shoe feels sticky and probably gone over it a little too much with conditioner, uh, which isn't necessarily a bad thing for the leather, but it is gonna make it hard if you're shooting for uh, that so desirable mirror shine or uh, the glass toe that so many people are trying to get nowadays. Again, just a very small amount. I rub it in with my fingers. When I first started shining, I was taught to use a cloth for the application. Uh, I've, 
I've changed that approach. I do not use a claw. Uh, using my finger, it does get better, uh, better spread of whatever I'm using, whether it be conditioner, uh, whether it be a cream polish or even wax. I use my finger for all of it. Uh, so I'm able to, but I'm also able to control it a little better. I know exactly where the polish is going, I know what I've hit, and I can feel it with my finger what is still dry or needing more cream or wax or whatever be the case. Okay, so I'm going to set that out of the frame for now. Move on to the next one. Again, no flaking on the patina, so that's a good sign. <clears throat> it's it, it is disappointing uh, when people tell me about you know they they spend money on a nice pair of shoes and they even do an upcharge to get some kind of cool custom patina and make their shoes really unique and then they get them and whether it's talking to me or watching videos of someone else on YouTube talking about you need to condition your shoes and uh, as it's sound advice but you know if that patina is not set and you throw on some conditioner or cream or something right across the vamp and your patina disappears and I can only imagine how frustrating that could be for that to happen. You'll notice I am getting as much of the shoe as possible conditioned. I want to make sure that this leather uh, doesn't dry out and that there are many, many years of usability in the shoe. I'm sure there will be. Order time for this pair was right about four weeks from the time that the order was placed to acceptance, which I was really pleased with. Uh, Ken had said somewhere between four to six weeks. I always tell myself uh, to look more on the, the farther end of that side, uh, time frame. Uh, usually that's what I find, especially recently, is that um, I was expecting more along that six week mark. So it's really exciting to be able to get these and get them, get them to my dad here in the next couple of days. If you don't, if you haven't heard of this brand, uh, I highly recommend giving Ken a follow on Instagram. Uh, it's just the brand Crew Nonpareil, and uh, I can go ahead and attach a link to it below. But uh, really, really, he's a he's a great guy, very down to earth, and uh, willing to talk through any questions or issues that you might have. Um, he was so helpful making sure that this pair would fit uh, properly for my dad as he's had just so many frustrations with different companies and different brands and just not finding the fit that works for his feet. So uh, I'm really excited about this. Ken has one of the most broad size ranges I've ever seen offered by a shoe brand before. Uh, it's really, really impressive. I think he offers all the way from US size 5 to US 15, which that is uh, just, that's incredible, especially for those with unique uh, foot sizes. You want to let the shoes dry for a little bit. Um, Sophia recommends you know, three minutes. I usually wait about five uh, to give it time for the conditioner to really soak in, especially when using uh, 
using it on new shoes. The, the pores haven't been opened up in the leather yet to really receive that dye or the conditioner in this point. So <clears throat> while it's just finishing up, soaking in, just gonna look over a few more details. Uh, the finishing is really clean. Uh, besides the issues on the sole there where they uh, overstitched into the cups of the sole, there's really no complaints that I can find. Uh, stitching is clean, nice finishing. They, they cleaned up where the, the stitching starts and stops, and really just a, a really sharp, sharp pair of shoes here. So after, after the shoe has had time to condition, take it over, this is an old, uh, this is a old horsehair brush that uh, my grandfather actually gave me. So this, is, this brush is older than I am, so it uh, just kind of goes to show the quality lasts. Give it a nice brush. Again, you're not necessarily looking for downward pressure so much as you are just trying to buff, buff off the excess conditioner that's there and didn't dry into the leather. And you'll see that this will give the shoes, give them a nice glow right off the bat. up here of the shoe after it's been conditioned and brushed so you can really see it's it's really a striking patina there um, kind of that museum effect and pretty well balanced I would be I would be happy with this result if I were the one doing the work so really really a sharp pair of shoes and here I can show you a close-up what I'm talking about as far as the overstitching inside the sole just here and not that won't cause any issues with the wearing of the shoe, just not not desirable. That's all. All right. So that's one that's brushed. I'll brush the other one here. that for the conditioning. Now, this, this shoe's got a couple of different colors in it. Um, of course, it's, it's got brown, so I've got my, um, my mint brown, uh, saphir cream there, and then it's got some red tones to it. So I've got, this is the um, Hermes red, so I'm gonna use a little bit of that. And then I've also got uh, my black cream here too, just to accent some of the, the darker areas, um, you know, along the tip of the toe and some of the different uh, darker areas, just as we're 
slowly building to that mirror shine finish. Now, something I also use, again, like I said, I use my fingers for all application, but I do have, this is just a 100% uh, cotton cloth that I use um, in between each step. So after I brush, I hit them with a quick uh, dry buff with this cloth, and you can see this uh, will kind of build up that nice soft glow just a little bit more, and just building a stronger foundation for that mirror shine as we get there. And as I've been shining, I've noticed that if you cut corners on the foundation, your, your mirror shine will never be as sharp or as clear as, as you want it to be. And the reason for that is, um, even when you're using pigmented waxes, which we'll be using for this pair, um, it's still not fully opaque. And so whatever is underneath the wax is still gonna show through. Uh, Seems simple, but if you're not fully hitting each one of these steps the right way, uh, then your mirror shine will just never look the way you're wanting it to. Uh, so after the dry buff, you can see uh, this is this is just conditioner, but uh, you're already getting to see a little bit of a soft reflection there in the toe. Um, so we're we're well on our way to what we're looking to do. So I'm going to start with the black and I'm just gonna hit the very tips of the toes and you'll see just a very small amount. Let me just set that off to the side here. So very carefully, because I don't wanna get on the contrast stitching either. Um, we're just going to rub that around very tip of the toe, just like that. And we'll come down, again, just a little touch. And we'll come down the side, right above the welt area, and up here, and hit just the very back of the heel space. Same thing here, hit that back heel, and we'll come down inside of the shoe. And this is just to maintain that patina that's been so carefully applied. From there I'm going to use my red and I'm going to hit, hit all those. Just clean it off whatever excess black there was. So get a little bit of red there and then hit the rest so the tub area. Bring out more of that red tone that is already there. Just want to make sure we're accenting that properly. Also, the flap here. Uh, this is a pretty red area, so we want to make sure that we're maintaining that coloring. It is the fire patina after all. Uh, can also have a tobacco patina, which is also very sharp. It's a little bit more understated, uh, a lot more browns in that. Uh, but want to make sure that we're keeping that red tone throughout the shoe. All right. And then finally, we're going to hit our brown. Again, just wiping off whatever excess is there. And I'm gonna hit brown practically in the rest of the shoe. You can see through here, it's more of that light brown. Just hit that up with some brown. Same here on the side of the shoe. Once again, set it off to the side uh, to dry and repeat the process for the other shoe. I'm going to leave these polishes out. Again, wipe off 
excess, grab the black, and just the very tip of the toe and the side. Finish it off with the brown. I'm able to shoot this video with just natural light coming through the windows. It's a beautiful day here in northern Indiana. Finally getting into that springtime season. Excited about that. So I'm going to be using um, the maroon wax for this pair. Um, I don't want to use brown wax. I think that might be just a little bit uh, too brown for this pair. And I don't want to use black as that will cover up the, the patina there on the toe and the gradient that they did. So I think this red, or uh, maroon rather, will do very nicely for maintaining the patina that's there uh, while also bringing up some a little bit more of the red tones that are already in the shoe. So that's what we'll be using for the uh, high shine and for the mirror shine. Uh, so I'll walk you through some of that in just a second. Uh, also, I will just point out briefly, so uh, people ask me quite a bit on Instagram what cloth I use. And uh, I started out with these cotton chamois from Kiwi. Uh, you can purchase them usually at like a Walmart or online. Um, they weren't bad. This has been used a lot, as you can tell. Uh, not bad, but um, not what I use anymore. I then found these 100% cotton cloths at, at um, uh, Target, I believe, and uh, was able to get these fairly cheaply, uh, but didn't like the different colors. I really typically prefer just a nice clean white cloth. And I was talking to Preston at the Elegant Oxford, and he told me that he gets his cloths at a fabric store. Go figure. So I was able to find 
this one, um, and you buy, I buy it by the yard typically, but this one's got a little bit of stretch to it. So this is 97% cotton with a 3% spandex to it. And you'll notice in just a minute when we start the, the shine, it, uh, the stretch allows me to pull it really tight and keep, keep the surface nice and flat there. Uh, as you know, you don't want any wrinkles there or it'll begin scuffing your shine. And I use that a majority of the time just to build up the shine. And then when I when I feel that I've built enough layers up, I use this. And this is 100% cotton, uh, much softer feel. And I use this with just water, maybe just a very small amount of wax. Again, pull it tight. This is all cotton, there's no spandex or stretch to it. And this is what I use, and you'll see just for my finishing cloth. A um, little bit of water, just a touch on the wax, and I buff uh, that last layer to really melt the waxes and give it that glissage that we're shooting for. Uh, if you are interested in some of these cloths, I'd be happy, uh, be happy to hook you up with some. Shoot me a message and uh, we can talk about it. I'll get your address and I can mail some to you. They're rather inexpensive and always wanting to make sure people are able to learn and increase their shining skills. These are still great. I still use these for that dry buff, which I'm gonna do in just a moment. So once again, just like with the conditioner, once those creams have had time to dry, you grab your uh, brush again and brush away. Again, we're not pushing down, um, not trying to crush the bristles, rather keep it light pressure and just fast. You wanna buff off the excess creams that we've put on and make sure getting that nice glow coming through. I have to say for a brand new pair of shoes, those are usually the hardest for me to work on as they just haven't, the leather hasn't been used yet. And it, it makes it so tough sometimes for the conditioner and for the creams and for the waxes to penetrate the pores of the leather and to really get that glow. This so far is doing really well. Um, the other thing, when you're brushing, don't forget to use the very tip. Make sure you get into those smaller spaces. You don't want to forget any of that. Once again, flat. This is all dry. dry So <clears throat> we're now to my favorite part. Uh, we're gonna start working on the actual mirror shine. So at this point, uh, if I'm working on a pair of laced shoes, uh, this is where I would typically put the laces back into the shoe and uh, lace those back up around the trees. 
Um, in this case, I am going to put the straps back into the buckles. And just, I do this, uh, make sure that the shoe is where it needs to be for the shine with the laces, especially once I finish the shine. Uh, I don't like to mess around with it too much as far as uh, fussing with putting the laces in the shoes and things like that. So I usually do it at this point, just makes it a little simpler at the end. where we get the wax out and uh, again I use my finger typically if it's an older wax I'll warm it up warm it up a little bit with my finger that's what I'm doing just warm it up uh, not bringing those solvents back up to the top making sure that it's nice and pliable for me to apply it to the shoe okay so uh, this doesn't matter I always start at the toe Get it down into the welt area like that. Make sure you're getting nice even coats. You want the shine to stay even as you build layer upon layer. So you want to make sure you're getting nice even coats on the shoe. ventures from you shouldn't do any two you should do two or three uh, or some people one or two I have found with uh, my work that one is pretty much my sweet spot um, it allows me to get a nice high shine or glow off of the rest of the shoe without bringing any of those unsightly cracked sh uh, crack shine creases coming out so that's what we're going to do here, just do one nice even coat across the entire shoe. Don't forget the flap there as well. The heel. Don't forget the heel. That, that's something if you follow me on Instagram at all, you know is one of my pet peeves is when people forget to shine the heel of their shoe. And then I always take a layer or two up against the sole. Uh, this is another one of those things like your heels. Some people don't do it. And it's, it's like driving a nice car and having muddy tires in my mind. It's, it's all part of the shoe. It's all part of the look that we're going for. And if we're gonna take the time, you know, two hours sometimes to get a nice, healthy mirror shine on the shoe, it just doesn't seem right for me to take the shortcut of, you know, two or three minutes just to hit the, the sole up with a little bit of wax, make sure that it's clean, make sure that it's dyed the right color. Just wanna make sure that it's all correct. So that's all I'm doing here. We'll set that aside. Let that dry again before we brush it one last time. And start all over.
My dad does have shoe trees. Uh, he's just sold a couple pairs of Holland Edmonds off uh, for the problem that they, they don't fit his feet right or properly. So he had told me he was waiting until we were able to find something that worked for his feet. And that's when Ken and I started talking about this pair. So we are, I really am excited for him to get these. He's anxious. Uh, I think he had me email Ken probably four or five times about where they were at in the process. And uh, like I said, Ken was always really good about keeping up with the shoes. Uh, he always knew right where they were at, whether that was in um, you know, the cutting or if that was in the sewing or the patina process. He always was able to tell me exactly where the shoes were at in the production process. So that was really nice and uh, appreciated for my dad. Again, get the sole. I always start at the tip of the toe. It just gives me that starting point. It's harder to see where you've already gone on the sole. Uh, the, the wax doesn't typically absorb the same way. Or at all if you're working with rubber like these. So this wax, it dries a lot faster than the cream or the conditioner. So I'm going to go right into brushing the first shoe. And this time make sure you get that heel too. Make sure you get the sole and make sure you get all of that wax. So we're building up that shine layer. I do not put the wax on the tongue and that's for the reason is um, I used to I thought that everything needed to go everywhere on the shoe I do not put wax on the tongue uh, for the same exact reason is uh, wax will stick with that, that annoying rub or scoop sound with it and obviously you aren't wanting that sound when you're spending the time and the more the money to have a pair of shoes mirror shined by someone like me, if you were to send me your pair of shoes and then you got them back and every time you step they had an annoying little chirp. I can imagine that would be a very frustrating issue to have. So I do avoid hitting the tongue with wax. Right. Do the quick drive up. Making sure to get the sole. Okay, so this is this is pretty a pretty solid base. Um, it's it's definitely reflective. We're getting there. Uh, you can see the soles, and this is why we don't forget the soles. Is that's already building up well. The heels are starting to get reflective. Um, and then to some people, this is where they would stop. They wouldn't even need to go further. Um, this is a healthy healthy shine. This would look uh, very nice 
with jeans or with some chinos. But that is not why many of you follow me. It is not for this level of shine. So we are gonna move ahead towards a full glass toe or mirror shine that we do here. So um, I had a water dispenser uh, once upon a time and it has broken and I have not yet replaced it. So we are back to the old school methods with uh, water. I use a small saucer. I sometimes will use the inside of my wax lid if I'm uh, traveling or away from home or something like that. But uh, I just use regular water right out of the tap. Sometimes I will use purified water depending if I'm in an area that has harsh water. Um, I use a couple of ice cubes to make sure the water stays cold. And then um, I do not use uh, mirror shine or um, uh, the mirror wax. I just use just the regular Saphir Pat Deluxe for all of it. So at this point, this is where we'll start building up those layers. And this is where we go just the toe and the heel. Again, don't forget the heel. The heel is important. Uh, that will lead to a well-balanced shoe shine. When I'm doing cap toes, especially when they're fresh out of the box. Uh, now, if this is a pair, if this has been a pair of shoes that have already been worn and I can see where the creases sit and where those typically reside, um, then I would be more comfortable going all the way up with the mirror shine right to the edge of the cap. But usually if I'm working on a pair of shoes that are brand new, haven't been worn yet, I, I always stay off, and I don't know if you can see it here, but I do always stay off just about um, maybe an eighth of an inch from the edge of the cap, just in case there's a little bit of creasing that creeps up in there. And that's, that's worked really well for me. Um, when you have the shoes on your feet, nobody can really tell that the shine stops, but it keeps that from cracking or becoming unsightly. You'll notice I do a couple heavy layers now when we're doing the first round of building up the wax here. Um, I don't typically keep count, but it probably falls somewhere between seven to 10 layers of wax when we're building. you want to make sure uh, you're keeping it inside that countered area so that's what I'm doing here is just add in the wax where that heel counter sits where I know it'll stay nice um, and firm and uncreased the whole time what I always do is I try to make it almost like a elongated triangle so that it looks balanced and tapers back into the rest of the shoe. going, keeping that long extended triangle. Come back to the toe, get another layer or two before we start buffing. All right, so just wipe off the excess build up there. This is where I grab my uh, shine cloth this is the 97% cotton with a 3% spandex to it. And you wanna make sure, uh, nice and tight, you don't want any wrinkles in this flat surface. You can see there, nice and flat, nice and tight. I'm 
wrap it. And then this is where some people's different processes come in. Uh, when I'm first wetting the cloth, I do go straight to the water. I tap it off on my hand to get to the level of dampness that I want. And then I will tap, tap the ice. Uh, make sure that I'm getting the cold water there. Again, you don't want your cloth too wet. The cloth is too wet. You'll oversaturate the shoe. And that'll lead to those dry spots uh, that everyone so desperately tries to avoid in this process. And then again, I, I just, I do apply a little bit of pressure. I'm not rubbing, uh, but I do apply a little pressure. Just get a little bit of wax there on my cloth. And then I just start in small circles. Make sure you're getting down into the crevices there and just slowly start buffing off the wax layers. Okay. Um, I will use my finger just to drop a couple of drops of water. You don't want your shoe shine cloth to start dragging or have too much wax on it. If it's too much wax, then it will start pulling off the wax layers as you apply them. So it's a, it's a delicate balance. I think this is the hardest thing, uh, or the hardest, hardest part that people have struggle with in the process is finding the right water to wax ratio, but allowing the waxes to melt and to glissage, but without having too much water or pull off the wax. So you'll notice I do go back and forth and straight every now and then. Uh, I'm able to shine just a little bit faster and sometimes I see that that will melt the wax is down a little faster than the circles. So you'll see we're, we're really getting a shine pretty quickly here. And that's, that's a testament to the shoes. Uh, it's also a testament to the polish. Uh, Saphir really is, uh, they create a great line of shoe care and it doesn't make it easy, but it makes it easier. I'll just say it that way. Every now and then, just rub it along uh, the base of the shoe there. you're able to see that on the camera, how that's building up really well already on the heel. It is easier uh, with the water dispenser to make sure your water is staying balanced. But I learned this way, so it's not, not hard come back. You'll see, add a little bit of water here and there add, just touch the wax every now and then. Really, really coming along. These are gonna be striking. I think once they're fully finished, really grab your eye.
this shoe down, um, let those solvents evaporate a little bit and move on to the next one, making sure we're keeping the shine even. But um, yeah, we're getting a nice, a nice strong base. We'll have a, this should be a beautiful shine by the time we're finished. Um, you can kind of see how that heel is, is coming along. So we're gonna set that aside, let those solvents evaporate off just a bit and start the other shoe and this is pretty much how I do it um, until I'm getting more into that finishing stage once I have enough layers of wax um, and the solvents have evaporated off and I'm using the other cloth just to finish it that I do focus more on one shoe at a time uh, just to make sure that that shine is fully building up and up until that point, it's nice to allow the shoes some dry time. Especially when I get multiple shoes in at a time and you know trying to make sure I'm getting them back to my clients without too much downtime. It's it's I found that this way works for me. It also works well when I'm shining some of my personal shoes and wanting to do a couple pairs at a time this method has worked well. So again, we're just building up nice heavy layers of wax on the toe. Again, I haven't counted. If you're counting, good for you. Uh, if you'd like to send me a message or comment below how many, how many layers I've done, um, I'd appreciate it just because I never think to count until I done but um, yeah I just want to make sure there's a nice heavy heavy layer here to provide that foundation and you see how quickly um, the start comes um, again some people would be happy just like that uh, it's reflective you're able to see yourself in it um, but I fully believe that a mirror shine should be a nice clear reflection in the toe uh, that's what my mirrors are as far as the mirror that I use uh, when I'm getting ready. So that's when I use the term mirror shine. That's what I want my shoes to look like as well. Getting heel, creating that nice elongated triangle. So that's kind of what I'm doing. Uh, try to show you guys just a little bit better where that area is. So I come, I come up the back, not right on the edge. That's usually that part will be used. Even with a shoe tree, it'll start to um, soften, and then come right down here to the corner, and then fill that area in with waxes. Uh, just to get make sure we're massaging the heel and fading it back into the rest of the shoe. Alright, so wipe 
above that excess that builds up. Grab shoe shine cloth. Usually I like to try to use the same portion of the cloth if I can, if I'm able to avoid um, oversaturating the cloth or putting too much wax on that section of the cloth. Um, if not, it's not a big deal if you move to new sections. I know some people recommend moving to new sections regularly. Um, I found once I'm able to get that perfect water to wax ratio, uh, my shines move along a lot faster. So once I find that, I try to keep that. Again, water, a little bit of wax, and just start. circular motions, making sure we're getting edge, especially on a shoe like this with more of a chiseled chiseled toe or chiseled last. Uh, you don't want to forget like the half inch that's right here. And I, I see some people do that. They they get a really, you know, uh, respectable shine right here on the top of the toe uh, and even on the sides. But when it's chiseled like this, they, they tend to forget the very front. So you don't want to do that. Um, you want to make sure that you're keeping everything again balanced. Uh, balance is the key. That's what we're shooting for. And again, just like on the other pair, just kind of quickly hit the sides. Make sure that getting that nice shine everywhere. Okay, we're back. I am so sorry about that interruption. My uh, my camera actually ended up dying um, while I was recording. So it is now plugged in, um, only lost about five minutes. So we're gonna pick up right where, um, right where we left off, which is shining the second shoe. So the first shoe is still sitting um, out of frame, still just evaporating off some of those solvents from the wax and um, we're going to go ahead and pick right back up. Uh, cloth is still wet. We're just going to add just a touch of water there. Grab a little bit more wax and get right back to it. Um, so we are still just buffing off that first, uh, that first layer of wax that we apply. And, uh, our first few layers. Again, if you counted while I was doing it, please let me know what number it was. Um, I 
honestly. I just kind of get a feel of where the wax is at after I've applied the layers. And as you apply it and as you do it, you kind of get a feel um, as you build up the layers, how that, it, how the wax feels when it's starting to kind of fill in the pores and where you know you'll be able to get a nice, nice strong foundational shine. So, uh, as I said before, for a brand new pair of shoes, these shoes are shining up really well. Um, really happy, honestly, with the way they're looking so far. Uh, I think they're gonna be a really sharp pair of shoes. Well, I know they are a sharp pair of shoes. Um, hoping we're able to just capitalize on that a little bit and highlight the patina with this mirror shine. And that's, that's the truth of it. Uh, you know, the mirror shines, they're fun. Obviously, I enjoy them and uh, I enjoy the look of them. But the truth of it is, uh, shoe shine really should just be magnifying the good features of an already uh, beautiful shoe. So that's what we're doing here, is we're taking a beautiful shoe and just trying to highlight those features. Again, we're getting that front. Like on the other shoe, we do not want, don't want that front to look dull and the rest of the toe to be mirrored. Be ever so noticeable. And then just keeping a touch of water there so my cloth isn't dragging and then I'm pulling those wax layers off. Go back and forth. thing is and you'll see I'm kind of focusing really quite a bit on one section of the toe and the reason for that is I can see um, the wax is, is it's reflective but it's kind of wavy and so what I'm doing is uh, with just a touch of the wax here and there is uh, helping to kind of melt that down just a little bit more so you get a nice clear reflection rather than that waviness so uh, just focusing a little bit on the tip of the toe to make sure I'm able to melt down that wax just right. Don't want a weird, weird spot on the toe that'll distract from the rest of the shoe. For this right now we're just trying to match the level of shine from this shoe to the other shoe so uh, trying to get to that same point so that we can add 
another layer or two of wax and buff again. Because these haven't been worn yet, I'm not going to go nuts on the shine. Uh, you know, sometimes it's fun to really push yourself um, and push the limits of what you're able to do. Um, and I've taken a few pictures of stuff like that where the reflection is really just pretty, uh, pretty out there. And that's a lot of fun, but um, these shoes not having any of the creasing yet, not knowing really where any of that will fall. I'm not wanting to push it too far. Um, just wanting to get them to the point where they're pretty, pretty shined up. So here they are side by side, and um, they are pretty comparable right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this one away, allow the solvents to uh, solvents to dry on it, and I'm going to add another another layer of wax and we will buff that off. I'm going to switch the shoes here. So this time we're not going to go as heavy, just like nice even coverage across the shoe, or across the toe rather. Again, keep leaving yourself about an eighth of an inch from the cap sure you don't get any of that broken mirror shine in here. Okay. And then once again, put the heel again a little bit. Still using the same same spot on the claw. Make sure it's nice and tight, and flat and smooth. And I really kind of hit that sweet spot on the cloth as far as um, the moisture. So from now, I'm really just going to be using drops of water directly on the shoe rather than oversaturating my cloth. So, do the same thing, just start buffing the wax, and you can feel it too um, as the, the shine begins to build. The surface of the shoe changes, uh, it starts getting smoother as the wax melts and fills the pores of the shoe. You're not feeling the, the roughness of the leather, but you're just feeling that smooth glide across the wax. And that's when you know that when you know it's filling in the right way. kind of see the way that heel's coming out. It's really, really sharp.
sort of that's really coming along nicely here. shoes shine up this this well this quickly some definitely take a little bit more time investment and so it's it's a lot of fun when a pair of shoes reacts this well to its first shine that's that's really that's really fun and exciting Also did not know how squeaky this chair was, so I apologize for that. Uh, future videos will be a little better. I'm working on some ideas for better audio and uh, try to make sure that these videos are a little bit nicer and maybe well put together. Just this one, I'm uh, so excited to get these out of the box and uh, do this do this shine for Ken. I wanted to get it going so uh, bear with me and hope you'll keep following along and see see what we're able to do in the coming coming months as we film some more videos uh, hoping to do some more shoe shine tutorials and things like that just to uh, challenge myself a little bit uh, broaden my horizons but I've had a lot of my uh, followers on Instagram asking me when I was going to do some videos so I'm going to give it a shot uh, see see how it goes all right so uh, again like I said I'm not taking these crazy to the limit I'm pretty happy with these where they're at and so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch my cloths so I'm going to put away the one with the spandex and I'm going to be using now just this really soft 100% cotton cloth that I have. So again, nice and tight, uh, twist it around your fingers. see there's no no uh, no wrinkles nice flat even surface touch it to the water again don't want it too wet just nice enough that it'll glide across the surface of the wet now this and I'm going to show you here we just touch it um, doesn't even really pick up any color um, as you can see that's there's really nothing on there except some of the solvents that I'm picking up. And then I just buff it very quickly. I hit the heel on the side of the shoe as well. Again, just pick up some solvents there. Again, you don't want this to be, my cloth is shedding a little. You don't want it to be too wet, just wet enough that you're able to Glide across it, not too much wax. You don't want to be pulling off the, the wax that we've been working to build. So just buffing very quickly, and this will melt that very top layer of wax and give us a nice, even surface. And give us that shine that we're, that we're shooting. The 
second the uh, the the second cloth isn't necessary at all. Um, I didn't use it for the longest time, but it was something that I had felt this cloth at um, the fabric store and thought that it might make for a decent finishing cloth, and it, it really, really has been nice. Um, I know that Andy, he uh, owns Pure Polish products, and that's another uh, top line of products as far as shoe care products as conditioners really, really something special as far as conditioning leathers. Um, I had a, had a jar of it a long time ago, uh, ran out and I've just never replaced it, but his products are top notch. I know he sells a couple of cloths uh, and I believe he's got two similar, uh, one that's used for building up the shine and then one that's used in a similar fashion just to uh, do that last final finishing buff. Uh, again, like I said in the beginning of the video, that uh, if you guys, if anyone's interested in getting some of the cloths that I use, uh, just shoot me a message. I'd be happy um, to get you one or two of the cloths that I use, uh, and it'd be relatively inexpensive. Uh, then you'd at least be using something that you know works. Um, it's able to provide some pretty decent shines take some of the guesswork out of at least the cloth portion of the shine. really no even color transfer. I'm just trying to grab some of the solvents to help melt down that last or that the last layer of wax to really get that sharp reflection and shine coming out. So we're well, gonna call that a day for now. Um, the nice thing about these being my father's is that I know that I will get the chance to work on them again in the future. And uh, by that point, he will have worn them enough for me to know where the creasing is going to be. So we will um, push them to the limit then. But uh, for now, really just wanted to get them conditioned and make sure they were healthy and ready to wear for him. And um, I think we've been able to do that. So uh, you can really, really see pretty well, I think. It's a pretty decent reflection in both of those toes. Um, again falling right around the shoe, along to the heel, nice and balanced. And uh, nothing, the, the pigment on the wax wasn't heavy enough to disrupt any of that patina. I'm just pulling out some of those reddish tones that were already there. Again, back to the heel and to the toe, nice and balanced shine. Um, overall, I believe, I believe this pair um, would have retailed somewhere between 350 to 400 US dollars. Um, based on the shoes that I've worked on and that similar price point, I would, I would take these just on first impressions alone. I would take these over those any day. Um, again, really the only con so far um, that I see and even feel, I mean, the leather seems like it's top notch, um, really good leather, but um, just the the stitching of the sole, uh, it's not channeled, uh, so it's right there on the surface, and then of course it's cutting into the, the cups of the day-night sole there. So those are the only two things that I see. Finishing is solid, the patina work is solid, and uh, shined up really well. So we will update you after a couple of wears, and we'll see where we're at. Thanks for following along.